This is my second attempt at growing Tolumnias in semi-hydro. My first attempt was four years ago when I got my Tolumnias in and I thought, put them in Lekka, dry top layer, guaranteed in my dry climate, and happy days, let them grow, you know, achieving vanda size. I was mistaken and I almost lost them. Since then, my Tolumnias went into baskets with just lava rock, wet, dry cycle, just like they like. However, in the summer of 2022, I got the opportunity to try again with a very, very beautiful, big, lush Tolumnia pomegranate. And the second opportunity I got was the one that I called Carmen because I was trying to reposition her into her basket with lava rock. And I had difficulty doing that because the spikes were in the way. I didn't want to cut them off because, you know, let the orchid absorb the spikes. So into semi-hydro and lava rock that one went simply because that one was already accustomed to lava rock. Meanwhile, things have happened, so... Here we are. My update on my semi-hydro tolumnias will start with pomegranate because she is the one that has had the most difficulty in staying happy and not rotting out on me. She was big, bushy, lush, had a lot of fans in the middle and bit by bit those fans started to rot out throughout the course of the winter, which I kind of expected, not necessarily the rot side of it, but the fact that, you know, the fans will die back. After all, it is her first winter with me, so yeah, older fans will die back, especially when the temperatures drop and it doesn't become to their liking. And she's still acclimating to my climate, so I figured I would lose some fans, but what was concerning is that the fans started to go yellow at the base, and that is a classic sign, of course, of things being too wet at the base of the Tolumnia. Now, she is potted up in a mix of ceramics with Lekka, and her top dressing is just grit, which doesn't absorb water, of course, and I thought that would guarantee a dry top layer. I was very, very wrong. When I water this orchid, the top is extremely wet, so enter December, January, I started to water her from the base and let the water absorb into the reservoir and not touch the top. However, with the wicking material inside the pot, there's a lot of wicking and eventually the water will rise to the top and then the top dry layer isn't that dry after all because the temperatures are too cold and there's not enough time to let the grit dry out between days and nights. So I lost quite a chunk out of the middle of my pomegranate. However, one lead is doing superbly. The new growth it has formed during these past months in semi-hydro is insane. I haven't reached Vanda size, but Dang, that already looks like a Neo Stylus or something along those lines. Extremely robust, very fleshy leaves, super happy, and clearly there are roots in the pot. I've been watching that fan for the longest time, cutting out the middle bit by bit so nothing spreads, just to make sure at least one direction of growth on the pomegranate will maintain and I can, if I have to, save the orchid, or if the other two leads will then start growing their own fans bit by bit, the transition process will have been successful. I am very, very concerned long term, though, that the little grit top layer that I have is not sufficient enough to keep the layers dry. Meaning, if you're going to try this in a climate where you have to deal with colder temperatures and things not drying out at the top, even though you water from the bottom, grit is not going to do it when it comes to the delicate bases of a tolumnia especially considering that my pomegranate is a big tolumnia. Imagine the same thing happen on a tolumnia that has smaller fans. Not a good idea, and I will eventually be picking off the top layer of the grit, maybe replace it with some lava rock. Meanwhile, the front leads, they've got two, are in spike. They are gorgeous, but I will be cutting those spikes off even though I feel the orchid is strong enough, but she can get stronger if I just relieve her of the spikes. And now that one has bloomed out for us, I would like to make sure that the orchid at least gets some rest and can recover. The other spike is still only in bud, but that's absolutely fine. This is a good time to be cutting the spikes off. And you can see that uh, just there, one little bit of bud blast. 
So in order for her to stop doing what she's doing after I filmed this, the spikes will be coming off for they shall grace my desk and keep me company. But it was definitely a learning curve. She had no issues with any transition. So that was a good thing. But the grit does not dry out fast enough. For my climate, for my temperatures, it may work in your environment. If you've got consistently warm temperatures that can guarantee anything above 18 degrees Celsius, then that would work out fine for you. In my case, that is not going to work out. So I'm going to be picking off that grit. Removing the spikes will also hold hopefully help her to trigger new growth and then we can see the other two growing points and how they develop in the months moving forward. Right now I don't think I've lost my pomegranate but it is very very clear that the transition was successful but the top layer is still too wet and it is dangerous so we're going to keep an eye on her. However so far so good, maybe not excellent but good and I'll take good. Candidate number two the next option I had to test out was Carmen. And Carmen came out of her basket with lava rock, as mentioned, and went into lava rock and semi-hydro straight away. And I didn't think transitioning was going to be an issue at all because she is accustomed to the media and this orchid has been in my collection for the past four years. Now, if I could have put her back in her basket, we wouldn't have this example, but this actually has worked out in our favor because lava rock and semi-hydro water retention, not wicking, but water retention, that's all we need. The roots will find their way and find the water. During the summer, it is easy to pour from the top because everything dries out. This one also only gets watered from the bottom up, as in soak the pot up to the drainage holes and just wait a little bit and that's it. Keep the base dry is the name of the game when it comes to Tolumnius and Semi-Hydro. Well, the lava rock has proven to be super duper effective and has not been wet around the base throughout the winter. <laughs> I still don't have the spikes absorbed that were giving me issues when I tried to reposition her in the basket, but she is growing a fabulous new growth in the back, and that has grown since she's been in this setup. And the front fan that has matured throughout the rest of the summer of 2022 is now blooming, and I am comfortable to keep those blooms intact. I have no intention of cutting that spike off because this orchid is doing great. Yes, she looks a little rough, a little bit ratty. That is because of scale damage in 2022. But in 2021, I had had enough of the mega orchid shuffle I do every year during the winter for four months, bringing orchids inside and outside, that during the spring of 21, I took her outside, I left them outside, and I didn't think much of it, and the temperatures dropped to 12 degrees Celsius, and boom, cold damage. So she's looking ratty on her old fans. But the new fans in this semi-hydro setup with lava rock, oh, ho, ho, I like what I am seeing. They're lush, they're plump, they're beautiful and green. Clearly, she's had enough light. I've got anthocyanin spots. Both of these orchids are living indoors all the time. I don't bring them out during the days because they get the angle of the sun late afternoon directly on them in the grow space. And considering there's not much activity, I don't move them. That's where they are. However, when I do soak my pomegranate, I do have her outside day after day after day to counteract the wet top layer that is then created so that she can air out. I can get her dry within two or three days, but that is not good enough for the temperatures as they are still very, very cold at night. And at night, the wicking continues in the pot. So in the morning, the pot is wet again and so on and so forth. You get my point, I hope. The fact is, if you were to try this and you're not entirely sure about your dry top layer, I would very much recommend lava rock in a semi-hydro setup and your orchid will be fine. It'll also work in the summer if you think you need to be watering all the time a lot because lava rock will dry out too fast, not necessarily in a semi-hydro setup. But if you were in doubt, during the summer with the warm air and orchids being outside all the time, there is no risk in misting the surface of the pot to keep the lava rock damp so that we don't burn any roots because of course everything's gonna dry out again. The risk is during the winter, case in point, my pomegranate. Not during the summer, case in point, my Carmen. 
Now, while I'm still a little bit apprehensive about their well-being, of course, I'm apprehensive with every orchid that is not happy based on temperatures and lack of light. While I'm still apprehensive, I have to say I am cautiously positive that this is going to work out and that pomegranate also just threw a fit because she is not accustomed to my nasty temperatures, but she will get there. Simply because of that one lead and that growth that I am seeing, a new fan is developing. This orchid is just going to love the rest of the time she spends with me. As long as I keep the base as dry as possible with as much ventilation as possible. Filming both of them in the sunshine, they are going to be very, very grateful is all I can say. But yeah, that's my little update. It's a little bit of a risque one with the grit, but not at all with the lava rock. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments if I haven't elaborated on something. Same thing. If you're wondering about my fertilizer regime at this point in time, because I'm being very tentative, I am still fertilizing them at 100 parts per million because they are in active growth. Whether it is summer or winter, they're getting what they're getting because they are big. And for that reason, 100 parts per million is what's going into the reservoir. And seeing as they're not drinking that up as fast as they would in the summer, that is plenty fine over the course of 10 days, maybe two weeks when I fill the reservoir up again. And seeing as it's all very, very slow and nothing is evaporating very quickly, I have no salt buildup, so the balance there is working out. I would so appreciate it if you would like this video. Thank you so much for that. If you feel that you could give somebody else some valuable tips because of this video, please share it around. Also appreciate that. And if you have watched this video to the end, thank you so, so much. That is a massive support to the channel. But most of all, your time is important to me and it is so appreciated. Thank you for watching. I get to wish you a fabulous day on that one condition though, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.